and welcome to season two of Misha's Journal Podcast, where I reveal what the Lord is saying through dreams, visions, and testimonials. Today's topic, the rebirth of America. Thank you for joining me um, for the episode of Rebirth of America. Um, This starts with a a vision that I received. Um, Actually, it was a a dream slash vision that I received um, from the Lord a few months ago. And I was just given the okay to release it. He wanted me to release it before, but I couldn't find the time and I missed my window. And so he's brought it back to me again, um, and I'm able to release it. It's very important to him, and I hope it encourages you. There's two parts to it. The first um, part of it is it's really hard to hear, but just be encouraged. And that was um, going to be the title, but um, I decided on on the current title because it's, um, I just thought it'd be more relevant. Um, so this starts out with me having a dream. I didn't understand what was going on at first, but as the months went by, passed by, I definitely understand, um, where everything is today. So this is about, so I was, it was me and a couple other people. Um, we worked in a government, like the White House, um, or the government, um, corporate America. It was me and two other unknown people. I don't know who they were. They were just personnel like, like I was. So we ended up, we were, we were, we ended up in this, there was a really, uh, large area and there were I, I didn't see what was inside of this building because it was dark, but it was probably like a holding place where they hold um uh, aircraft or but it was so dark you couldn't really see. So that's just you know, hangars or, or something like that. That's basically um what I what I um what where we were kind of not hiding out because we were authorized personnel, but we weren't supposed to be in this area, the area that we ended up. So we're kind of just there observing. Now, these other two guys that were there, they were observing as witnesses, just like I was. And that's basically all they were there to do. So when I looked out, um, I looked outside, I saw kind of hiding a little bit, you know, um, because I wasn't supposed to be in that area and see what I saw. I saw this, what I called at first when I wrote this dream down, I called it a transformer. I saw this huge transformer that had the body of a man and then the rest of his body. He had the face of a man and the body of a helicopter. I later did some research and found out that was um, Armadon, the destroyer. And um, he's uh, he's in the Book of Revelation. He's in the he's in the Bible. Um, I don't have my. I'm I'm just going off of what I remember, not going by scripture. Um, the the Lord is he wants me to kind of uh, just I guess sharpen my my skills by doing this off the top of my head instead of reading it out from paper. And so that's why I'm um, not quoting anything. But I just want to go off of memory and and I want to, I want him to speak to me. In fact, let me say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your word that you want to release um, to your people. To not lose heart, to not um, grasp the information that you want to give them, but not out of fear. And um, I pray that this reaches who it's supposed to reach. And I, I pray for all of you 
and none of me. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. So, so then I, I saw the rest of, of this, of his body was, it looked like a helicopter and he was vigorously, like, he was picking people up, the government personnel, picking them up, slamming them down, like, not, not in a, in a, in an aggressive way, like he was there for business. He was there for business and that's how he moved. He just moved like he had one mission in mind and he was picking up personnel going and coming and going coming and going picking up them up and dropping them down um underneath him there was an aircraft that fit it was a round uh aircraft that fit right into the bottom of this his his body so he's basically half machine half that's why i thought he was a transformer because that's what he looked like you know those movies that we watch we're just we just watch them and don't think much of them, but they have a lot of significance to the demonic kingdom. Just wanted to point that out. So it was a huge, huge um, aircraft, a UFO that was in inside of the bottom of this being. He had the face of a man. His hair was stringy. It was like uh, just past his neck. And it was really stringy. That's that's all I remember about him. And he was about business. He was not playing around. He, and the people that he was working with weren't scared of him. They were just going about their life. They had black suits. And they were just, when they got dropped off, they, they left the aircraft and then they went about their business. And it was really like, uh, it was a lot of activity going on. A lot. Of, it would. It just looked like it, it looked like war. It looked like a. a um, it looked like war, like or a preparation for war. But it, yeah, that's what it looked like. And um, I guess I couldn't believe what I saw. And so. <sighs> let me see. I do have scripture that I wanted to so that's not it I have another dream just or not not another dream but an open vision that the Lord showed me I kind of wanted to read some scripture that he gave me to share and so um first I want to give a little insight about what I did after I saw that after I wrote it out, I was deeply disturbed. I was in tears and it was a deep mourning because basically the Lord was telling me that America is, you know, it was just, and of course all the rumors and everything that you hear. This was around the time where everybody was kind of going through a lot. And then you, then you had the whole, you know, there's a lot of rumors and things going around. So I'm glad I got to release this now when everything died down. Um, but I'm not the only one that has this message. Um, there, There's some good things. There's actually a really, really some very good things that come out of this. So I don't want you to lose heart. Just hear me out and listen to the rest of it. Um, so... I was in tears. I was kind of mourning because this is my home. You know, this is this is our home, and it, it just it didn't feel good to see this. So the next day, I attended church. And my church that I attend is online. I don't go to just anyone's church. And I happen to live in a place. I'm in Seattle, Washington. I happen to live in a place where there's not many good churches here. There's a lot of mixture. If you go, um, if you if you find a church you think you like, you you end up they might have some mixture in their doctrine. And I just I don't play around when it comes to my faith. 
I don't play around when it comes to um, incorporating other doctrines into my into my into my um, my spiritual life. So I like to stick to you know um, the truth, truth only. I don't care what it is or who it comes from or where it comes from. I just want truth, and so I attend church online. So I went to church. I watched church. Um, I go to their prayer meetings because that's what we do every morning before church. We're up at nine, and and church starts at uh, what eleven, eleven thirty. So I'm there. I'm pretty much all day. I pray early in the morning, attend church, um, and then. This in particular day, they had a guest speaker on there. His message was about a dream that he had about America. I was, I, I you know, those feelings were, were still there. You know, the sadness and everything. And so here he, here he is. Uh, and he's speaking about the dream that he had. And so, um, at the end of his dream, it was very, it was uh, some similar things that, to what I said, not at all. Um, he didn't say anything about what uh, the, the he, it was similar uh, meaning that America was at war. And that was it. He had a completely different um, message. His was about um, America at war, but he just had a, a, a other points. And that's what the Lord will do. He'll have us prophesy in part. And it comes together. We have to put it together like a puzzle. And so, um, what he did mention at the end of that, while I was in tears watching this, was that he had a dream about a baby the Lord gave him and the baby had a tag on the toe and that tag was called America. The tag on the toe was called America. And if you, I mean, I, I sobbed like a child that just, I don't know if you remember just crying deeply about something to where you're just like snot is running and everything. But I'm telling you the relief I felt in that moment. And Holy Spirit right then was comforting me. You know how Holy Spirit does. And he comes on you. And that was a, a confirmation that, yeah, this is him. This, this is coming from him. The relief I felt. Okay, so basically America's going to get another chance. It's, we're going to have to undergo, this is what he said, we're going to have to undergo some hard things. Um, persecution, some really hard things, but America gets a second chance and there will be a rebirth that comes about. After I got my bearings and I was just, you know, I was just sobbing and crying. I had an open vision right then. And the Lord showed me a man that was arm to arm, swaying side to side. Arm, arm to arm, like his arms were around other people. There was a big crowd, but he zeroed in on this one man with a trucker hat and a t-shirt and jeans or whatever. You can tell he was American. And he had his arms on both and either side, just holding on to his neighbor. And they were swaying, to singing. And he basically was telling me, showing me that it's going to bring unity. People are going to be unified again. They're going to, it's whatever is going to happen here. He's going to bring everyone together again. Despite what, what the enemy's plans are, he's giving America a second chance. And if this doesn't touch your heart, I don't know what will. Because we were headed for destruction. And we're, we're, we're going to get a second chance. Now, I want to give you scripture. 
This is an apostolic prayer manual that we read at church. Um, this title um, is called First Love. And the Lord wants me to read a few scriptures from here. This is what he wants from his body. Because we've become very lukewarm. We've taken God out of the picture. We've taken him out of our schools. We take, we've take we taken him out of... I don't know if the, the court system is completely um, rid of the Lord. Um, but we've definitely taken him out of our schools. And that's why our kids... That's why... Ever since that, that's happened, our kids, our, our schools are being shot up. And they were protected before. They were protected by the hand of God. But when you bring other things in, he, he has no choice. You're pushing him out. He has no choice but to lift his hand. Voting for abortion. You're bringing in things and you're taking God's hand off. You know, um... So slowly but surely, the enemy's been just moving in on territory. What is that uh, principality called? Um, Molik. Molik is the principality of abortion. So when we vote, when we vote for uh, uh, for abortion, we're inviting a principality here to have their way. Um, and they, it's basically sacrificial homage to this deity, to this demonic principality. And this is what we're seeing. People don't know this. They don't know that that's what they're doing. And, they're, and it's in the name of whatever lie the, the enemy told them. It's my body or whatever they're saying. It's you're you're killing children, you're killing babies. And the Lord's not OK with it. So these are some of the things that brought up the, the, the judgment to America. These are some of these are only a couple of things that brought judgment to America, among other things. There's so many things, you know, um, but those are just the main two that I'm that. The trafficking, the, you know, all of the things. Just this place has just become a cesspool for demonic, satanic, and occultic activity. Bringing in idols, having idols, putting everything before God. We were founded on biblical we had a biblical covenant basically we had a covenant with the lord and america sadly has crossed way too many boundaries and so america's under judgment here are the scriptures that i'd like to share matthew 22 and 37 to 38 jesus said to him you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. So we need to come back basically to our first love. We have work to do if we want to see this rebirth. We have work to do. I'm, I'm so relieved that he's giving us another chance. I don't want to move and go live in another country to where they'll just be looking down or whatever, even if they welcome us with open arms. This is our home, and I'd like to bring our father back home as, as he should and rule over this country again. I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to stay home. Anyway, uh, let me read a couple uh, more scriptures here. Mark 12 and 29 to 30. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, the first commandment. Second Corinthians 11 and 3, but I am afraid 
that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, that your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Oh, let me read another one. I think you understand, but I just I want to read another scripture. 1 Peter 1 and 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. John 17 and 26. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. That was Christ. He was he wants to us to he wants to instill love in us, the love of the Father. The same love that the Father has for Christ. He wants us to have that love for 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 God, for the Lord, for, for Christ. We need to turn back basically to our first love. We need to turn back to the Father. We need to accept our Lord Jesus Christ. We need him. We absolutely need him. We cannot live without him. We cannot live and keep going like this. We can't not go on like this. And so I think that this may be conditional. I'm not sure if it's etched in stone. Um, I think that if we all come together and, and come back to the Father and reestablish covenant with Him, then this will be a reality. And so there's hope. There's at least hope. And this is what the Lord is saying. If we just keep going and folding our fingers and letting uh, demonic, satanic, and occultic uh, deities and principalities into the country, then I don't think that this is, this is going to happen. So we need to all do our part here. Come back to our first love. Actively seek after the Lord. Put oil in your lamps. Burn again for the Lord. Not lukewarm. We're the lukewarm church in Revelation. We're the lukewarm people that they speak of. Being lukewarm to the Lord is worse than, than, than a lot of things that he doesn't like. He does not like lukewarmness. He hates lukewarmness. And so I, I want to see if there's anything that the Lord wants to speak. Anything else? Anything else, Lord? I think this is it. God help us. Please turn back to your first love. Take it very serious. Good night and God bless.